As Christmas rears its festive head, I'm reminded of all my favorite memories getting games on Christmas morning. Now back in the day, I was pretty big on my Game Boy Advance SP, and one of my most coveted cartridges was Sword of Mana. Before we get into this though, I, I gotta remember, is it Sword of Mana or is it Sword of Mana? That's the question here. Mana. Okay, well you just had to clarify. Thank you. Now I never really made it past the first dungeon, but I always loved the gameplay. I recently found out that it's actually a reimagining of Final Fantasy Adventure, also known as Seiken Densetsu, the very first ever Mana game. So I tried all the different versions, and Sword of Mana is just the best one. Let's talk about it. Now I know this is definitely not a popular opinion. If you do a little research, you'll actually find that Sword of Mana is viewed as too plodding and prolonged, whereas Final Fantasy Adventure is simple, effective, and just the right amount of challenging. I guess it makes sense. When a game has less memory, simplifying some aspects of the game design is just the easiest way to innovate. Finding the best experience of the first Mana game depends on the criteria we compare between the versions. From a gameplay standpoint, all the versions of Seiken Densetsu have some amount of fun action RPG madness. But Sword of Mana plays like the other games in the series, and it feels more fluid. The combat's super fun, you move freely across the screen, slicing and dicing your enemies into rabbit meat. The nice thing is you're also not as alone as you are in Final Fantasy Adventure. Sword of Mana offers up a few AI characters to help you on your journey. Having two characters can be quite chaotic, and sometimes it goes way off the rails, but I appreciate the helping hand. There's also multiplayer support that lets you trade items and eventually summon stronger spirits. Unfortunately, I, I have no friends. Just kidding, go check out the scent. Sword of Mana adds a new class system, replacing the stat boosts from Final Fantasy Adventure, as well as item and weapon crafting to customize your gameplay style. I find it gives you a lot more control over your strengths and weaknesses, which is key for making it through the game alive and well. I also like that the more you use a weapon or spell, the stronger it becomes. It's a very simple and effective leveling system, so suck on that, Final Fantasy Adventure. Magic spells are easily castable and always equipped, and with some D-pad magic, Fun combos turn the tide of battle in your favor. You still have to switch weapons and items with the circle menu to make beating up certain enemies easier, but it sure beats the prodding and prolonged process of waiting for the Game Boy to switch screens so you can move the cursor to pick an item to equip to the B button. Oh, and you get to do the exact same thing with the spells. Yay! Now, listen, you can argue my points on gameplay, but the artistic direction of Sword of Mana just blows the other games out of the water. The presentation makes you look at all these reviews of Final Fantasy Adventure and even Adventures of Mana and just think, how do you see Sword of Mana as inferior? The backgrounds are super lush and very colorful, and I like having different sprite layers in certain areas, even if it does impede gameplay a little bit. It looks nice! The characters in Sword of Mana are also way more expressive with their animations. It's a really simple and effective way of knowing how a character's feeling. Definitely beats reading really slow moving text. I also like having the character portraits when there's cutscenes, so it's easy to tell who's talking. Now, the art design, man, uh, some of these fashion choices are interesting. Now, if I'm the hero, there's not a snowball's chance in hell that I'm staying warm running through the snow paths and I'm from Canada. NPCs have a lot more personality, and Sword of Mana also throws in some side quests for fun. Larger areas get a bit of a facelift too. The town of Wendell looks really basic in Final Fantasy Adventure, but gets a little more infrastructure in Sword of Mana to reflect its Mana clan roots. There's all sorts of whimsical looking buildings and a massive cathedral as the main hub of the city. To top off all these new changes, the music in this game is killer. It's really good. Now that statement has a bit of a double-edged meaning. The soundtrack will get you really pumped up and feeling ready to fight, but there's also this really weird, saddening feeling behind a lot of the music. Even when you're comfortable, it's still trying to make you feel uncomfortable. Kenji Ito was responsible for both the soundtracks of Final Fantasy Adventure and Sword of Mana, so you're bound to hear some remade tracks in here as well. Now having fun gameplay, improved visuals, and polished music doesn't mean much if the story isn't that good. Simply put, the story of Sword of Mana is… not bad. 
It's probably the most critiqued part of the game and is definitely viewed as being stretched out a lot just to pad out a lot of the gameplay. Like Final Fantasy Adventure, you're an imprisoned gladiator who fights monsters for entertainment. The twist here is that the ruler of the realm Dark Lord killed your parents for harboring a fugitive of the Mana Clan. In classic hero fashion, your quest of vengeance begins by trying to escape and defeating Dark Lord, which goes about as well as it could after being starved and locked in a dungeon for years. You get fished out by this giant bunny, you save a girl from some monsters, find out about a famed swordsman who could give you some advice about sword fighting, so you go to his cottage only to find the girl you saved earlier trying to beat you up. And here's the other twist with Sword of Mana, you can play as the girl. In the heroine path, your whole village gets pillaged by Dark Lord, his magical assistant Julius, and an army of soldiers. Since the heroine is the last surviving Mana Clan female, she escapes with famed swordsman Bogard to his friend's house in the Grant's Realm, the home of the realm's council, Herman. The heroine hides out there until the council and his wife are killed by Dark Lord and his soldiers. Feeling guilt for having so many people killed for protecting her, the heroine uses her magical skills to gain strength to defeat Dark Lord. So from the start, you have the fates of both heroes intertwined, and they must protect the world and its life source, the Mana Tree, from a common enemy. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, but I don't really want to give it all away. I do like that the game has both paths, so you can see different cutscenes happen, but from a different point of view. It's essentially good motivation to slash through monsters and men alike, twice. At this point you might be thinking, the visuals have improved, the soundtrack is remastered, the gameplay is more like Secret of Mana, and the story makes sense. What's the problem? To that, I'll say that there's nothing wrong with Sword of Mana in the first half of the game. The first half of the game is great, but it almost seems like the second half was rushed to meet a deadline or something. There's a lot of palette recoloring with the sprites, to the point of having two towns look almost completely identical. The gameplay is still really fun and holds the rest of the game up, uh, minus the AI. Here's looking at you, Lester, you literal piece of garbage. I do like the various upgrade and class systems, but pretty quickly you begin to realize that you just need to distribute enough stats to cast spells and have good physical damage. So really, there's only a handful of classes that are viable for both paths of the game. My biggest gripe by far is the progression of the story. After a big fight leads into the second act of Sword of Mana, you're forced to backtrack a lot more to unlock certain areas. In one case, you make it all the way to a dungeon, only to find out you need to get something to open the seal on the door. However, that something is found in a completely different part of the world, and you need to run back to a cannon to fast travel to get there. It's just a, it's a little annoying, and it takes a lot longer than running around on water with a robot chocobo. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to use a bit of spoiler action to illustrate my point. There are two major fights in the game. Your first boss battle with Dark Lord, and then another big battle. For the second battle, you're required to find the Sword of Mana and make your way to the Mana Sanctuary. In Final Fantasy Adventure, you have maybe three or four areas to fight through to get there. With all the backtracking in the second half of Sword of Mana, you've probably gone through about 10 to get to the same point on both routes. Add to the fact that the stories of the hero and the heroine pretty much become identical in the game's second half, and you begin to see why some people view Sword of Mana as drawn out. On the bright side, the music is still consistently good. Still, even with a tedious process to get the legendary sword, there's still a good amount of challenging fights and the game wraps up quite nicely. Sword of Mana does try to do a lot to change up the formula of Final Fantasy Adventure, so that it feels more like a mana game. The gameplay is simple and has weird issues, especially with AI, but it keeps the fun going. The visuals and the music do get reused, but that doesn't make them any less enjoyable. The biggest hurdle for some may be the story, but I thought it was fine after all the backtracking madness. It's not pushing any boundaries, but it kept me going to see the game through. A game is the sum of its parts, and while sort of mana has some broken pieces, its best elements hold it up as my favorite version of everyone's first mana adventure. Thanks for watching, I'm uh, glad to be back in the groove of making videos. Who knows, you might just see some more RPG videos from me just yet. I'll link a few for you to watch right now, but with that said, I'm False Proof, and I'll see you later.